Hey there, and welcome back. My name is Gardner. I've been running a YouTube channel called Gardner Bryant for the last seven years. In that time, I've learned quite a bit about video production on Linux, and I wanted to share some of that awesome stuff that I've learned with you. If you haven't watched the previous videos in this ongoing series about video editing on Linux, I'd recommend that you do that because we're building on concepts that we've learned previously. In this episode, we're going to talk about doing effects as well as compositions and adding visual interest to your storytelling. All right, let's get to it. We're going to go back to the uh, previous edit here, the one that we were doing um, together. So in this video, we're going to show you how to do compositions as well as uh, effects. Um, now, there's a couple different categories of effects, and I'm only going to go over like some of the more uh, basic effects because there are quite a few of them. Uh, but these are the ones that I use the most. So let's start off with basic effects. Now, the, there are a few effects that you'll uh, find that you can easily access um, here in the timeline. The first one is going to be the fade in. And now if you mouse over here, you'll see that there's the double click to drag or to add a fade. So you can see that adds a fade to the entire clip. Um, now it's a little weird with compositions. Um, if you have a track underneath, then it's going to both cause the track that has the fade in or the fade out for that matter to, to fade from or to black, but also it will dissolve into the track beneath it. Um, this is kind of a weird, uh, result. I wouldn't expect it to behave like this, but that's how it behaves. Um, there's also the, uh, wipe transition. So if you go to the bottom here, you can see that there's this purple icon. It might be a different color on your system. If you click on that, it'll add a wipe. And wiping is what most people consider to be a fade. You can see that we're wiping between these two uh, video tracks. If I play it from here, we get the dishes done. There you go. You can see that it, it, it slowly wipes between the two. Now the difference between an effect and a composition, um, that's something that we're going to have to talk about. So this little, this weird little purple clip here, what that is, is a composition. And you can see that there are multiple types of compositions. Um, we actually have a whole list up here of compositions. If we click on this, um, if we click on the wipe here, we can actually see that we can change the type of composition that it is. And basically what this does is it allows us to mix two video layers together. Um, and it gives us quite a bit of control actually. We can also set a, a, a wipe method. Um, now these are going to be, these are going to allow you to do sort of a Star Wars like wipe. Um, so you can see the softness is you know, we can have a hard edge like that. So it, it comes around like that, or we can add some softness to it and it adds a little bit of noise and makes it a little bit more transparent, right? So you can, you can see the idea, right? You have compositions, which allow you to mix multiple tracks together and you have uh, effects which uh, apply only to the clip that it's applied to or the track that it's applied on. Um, so we've covered the, the, the very basic tools of wipes and fade-ins, uh, and the same will hold true for the audio effects. So you can actually add fade-ins and fade-outs on, um, on your audio tracks. This is actually super useful. Um, and then there's also you know, the wipe and the fade-out um, on your video tracks. Um, those are very useful. Um, what I have found is that um, the wipes are usually pretty great, but there's also other ways that you can do wipes. So if you could, you can just add a wipe like this. If you click up here and you go to uh, composite and transform, you can actually add a, a manual wipe. Um, so you can, you know, set a keyframe here, right? This is your first keyframe. And by adjusting these parameters here, you can actually um, change how the composition affects the clip. So we have keyframes. Now, if you're not familiar with how keyframe animation works, uh, it's pretty straightforward. You create two points uh, on, the, on the track. And the way you do that is by moving, you know, your playhead here, or you can adjust it down here and it will reflect up here. And then you're going to add another keyframe. And what this does is it allows us to set the start and end parameters, and then the computer will automatically interpolate between those two keyframes. So if we want to say the opacity is 
uh, 100% here and 0% here, we can actually come down here because we're, we're selected on our keyframe and we can actually reduce the opacity. Now you can see that if we come back to the beginning, every frame we're going to be interpolating between those two keyframes. You see that? So it handles all the tedious work that you might have to do if you wanted to perform a wipe manually like that. So uh, another interesting thing about this is you can actually set uh, a, a uh, you can actually set an interpolation mode. So if you go to linear here, uh, and you want to be on the keyframe that you want to have set here. So you can go to discrete, which will basically not do any interpolation. Linear is just you know do the math, figure out how many frames there are, and then adjust it the same amount every time, or you can do smooth, which has a Bezier style curve. Um, the issue with the with the smooth is that it's it's very it very much follows that same curve that you see right there in the icon, and it's not you, you can't adjust it. A lot of other uh, video editing software you can adjust. So, all right, let's see let's see how that feels. And of course. If it looks a little weird because I'm doing this the opposite of how it should be done. So this would be 100% and this would be zero. And it's very quick as well, but. Luke, did we get the dishes done? Yeah, and this is not like the ideal place for you to use this. This is just kind of an example of how you would do that. We've talked about composite and transform. We've talked about wipes. Um, there are multiple ways to do it. Pretty much all of the types of effects and compositions that you would want to do. Um, so you, you'll notice that there is composite and then there's composite and transform. What's the difference? Well, basically uh, the composite and transform gives you the uh, rotation parameter uh, and the composite does not. They're almost identical otherwise. I have found that composite is slightly more performant than uh, composite and transform, but uh, I mean, it's marginal at best. Okay, so the other um, compositions you can also access from here. You can click and drag them into your timeline. Um, Cairo Affine Blend, you know, all of these are going to have slightly different uh, parameters that you can adjust. Uh, affine and Composite are kind of the same thing. Um, and then you're gonna have things like, uh, you know, Darken, which works a lot like um, GIMP or Photoshop's uh, layer blending modes. And basically this just can XOR bits in the video f file and, you know, do some kind of weird effects like that. Honestly, I have very little use for most of these besides transform, composite and transform and wipe. Yeah, you'll see that we have composite and transform, transform and composite. The, <laughs> so each of these does something slightly different. You can see that we can do some wacky stuff. Um, we can adjust the, uh, and if we play, we, get the we you see that? <laughs> anyway, so that's compositing. Um, like I said, I have little use for most of these other ones. Um, composite and transform is really uh, the one that I go to the most. But now we have effects. Let's talk about this. Uh, effects are pretty interesting. You can do a lot with these. Um, Again, we have a, a simple transform that we can use, and this can be applied to the clip that we've selected here. Uh, you, can, you can zoom in, you can zoom out, um, you can set the opacity, you can change the rotation, and this is a simple one axis rotation. And you can also do the same keyframing effects. Now you notice that like I can set this to zero, and now, You'll also notice that uh, when you apply effects, they are very slow. Uh, effects are incredibly slow to be applied to um, clips. And that's where proxies uh, come in handy. Uh, in fact, I'm gonna generate proxy clips for all of these. Um, but I did wanna show that uh, effects are <laughs> uh, incredibly inefficient in Caden Live. Most other uh, video editors like Olive and, and other applications like that are actually going to have much better uh, effects. Uh, they're going to be more performant. Um, I don't understand why Caden Live is so slow at applying these effects, but um, when you generate your proxy clips and if you have this set to 540 or 360p, um, this is the preview resolution, uh, generally that uh, resolves all the issues that I have with 
performance. And you'll note that we're rendering these proxy clips. You know, each one of these is less than two minutes long, so it shouldn't take very long to render four proxy clips for these. Uh, if you missed the proxy clip video, go check it out. It was actually, uh, it was actually pretty good. You know, if you're doing just very basic editing stuff, um, you probably don't need to do proxy clips, but if you're doing any amount of like composition or effects, uh, you're gonna wanna do proxy clips unless you have like the craziest powerhouse PC. But but even then I have a Ryzen based desktop. It's a Ryzen 7 and it's it does not handle <laughs> effects very well either. So there you go. You see, you see how much better that performs now that we have proxy clips. Um, it's kind of incredible. Did we get the dishes done? So there we go. You, you have transform. There's also, um, you know, there's, there's a handy list of, of your favorites here. Um, you have your wipe and your composite and transform for com compositions. And then uh, you have your lift gamma and gain, which is color correction. And we'll talk about that in a later video. And you also have transforms here. Um, but if we go to effects, we can actually do transform, we can do rotate, uh, lens correction. Let's, let's add lens correction and just see what we can do here. So you can see, you can actually manipulate these um, so that you can correct any kind of uh, lens aberrations or, or whatever. Uh, we don't need that. So here we have uh, some interesting stuff. You have alpha gradients. Well, and so alpha gradients basically uh, gives you uh, a very simple uh, way to just fade out a part of the clip. Um, so we can set our min value and that's going to um, move the alpha gradient over to whatever direction. And then we have our max value and you can see that like, we're actually, uh, we can set our transition width here and we can move the position like that. And now you can see that we have a, a split view, essentially. There's other ways that you can do this. Um, this is, alpha gradient is a, is a good option to do something like that. Um, but again, all of your use cases for these are going to be highly dependent on what you're actually trying to achieve with your storytelling. Okay, and then we have rotoscoping. Let's drop rotoscoping on here. Now what we can do is we can actually start clicking and we can create um, sort of a uh, an arbitrary shape using nodes. And you can go back after you've selected all of your nodes and you can adjust them. So you can see here that we're actually selecting just around my, my head And once we finished, which we're almost done. There we go. So now you can see that we've actually cut me out of the frame and I'm compositing on these two different tracks. Now you can do this on a, as a rotoscope, so you, or as a, a keyframe. So you can go in and you can adjust these keyframes and it will actually interpolate between those for you automatically, which is super handy. Um, but it is very tedious work to do these, uh, to get it to look great. Um, so there's uh, rotoscoping and there is chroma keying. Um, if you have a green screen, chroma keying is the better option. Um, but again, using Caden Live's implementation isn't my favorite. Um, yeah, and then we can delete that. Next we have edge cropping. So that's going to be uh, in the transform we can go down to edge crop. And again, this is exactly what it sounds like. Um, you can crop the bottom of the frame. See that? Uh, you can crop the left of the frame. You can crop the right of the frame and the top. Um, that's, that's useful uh, for certain applications. If you're doing like, uh, if you're using a screen capture of like a, a video conference and you wanna like Im uh, add in your raw camera footage, you can screen crop. Um, you can edge crop. It's, that's pretty useful. That's a pretty good use case for edge cropping. Um, but 
You can also do things like mirroring, which allows you to do funky weird stuff like that. And so the last thing that I wanted to cover is that all of these uh, effects that I've talked about, I've applied to this single clip. But what if you have like a whole track of uh, video clips that you want to apply the same effect on? There's a couple ways you can do that. Let's say that we want to do a transform, right? And we're gonna rotate this uh, so that it looks like that. Now, let's say that you just have two clips. You can copy and then you can go over here and paste the effect and it's going to have the exact same effect applied. But that gets tedious, especially if you have, you know, many clips that you want to apply the exact same thing on. And then if you change your mind later, you have to go back and delete them all or adjust each one individually. That sucks. So what we should do then is go into our effects bin over here and we're going to tr copy our transform and put it right on the, the layer here, V2, which is where we have all of our clips. Now, if we go like this, uh, if we click on V2, we can see that we have our uh, effect and we can apply an arbitrary rotation and it is applied to all the clips on this one track. And it doesn't have to be V2, we can do V1 as well. Um, so we could go, let's rotate it the other way. So now all of the video tracks are rotated. And actually that's kind of, <laughs> that's a little anime, isn't it? <laughs> it seems a little anime to me. Huh? <laughs> anyway, and, and this holds true for all of these, um, all of the effects can be applied to a layer rather than just to a uh, transform, rather than just to a clip. Um, so you can see if we click on each of these clips, they don't have an effect applied to them. We have to click on the actual track in order to bring up the properties of that effect. So yeah, there's other, uh, there are a few other cool things that you, you can do. You can uh, disable all of the effects here. You can also disable the effects there. Um, I believe this affects only the uh, effects on this track uh, and this will affect, um, yeah, it will only affect the effects that are on that clip. Uh, similarly, there's some other cool stuff. Um, if you click on here, you can actually save a preset, give it a name, rotate, and now we can actually select rotate. If we have multiples, we can actually select whichever uh, preset we wanted to use. This is really handy for something like the rotoscoping tool. If we open this up and apply it to, let's say we apply it to this effect or to this clip. Uh, now we can actually go in here and just set four points. And this is something I didn't show, but you can see that there's little handles here and you can actually draw out a circle. Um, I would really like to have a, uh, like an actual circle generator in here rather than having to do this by hand so I can get perfect circles because doing this is tedious. But once you've made somewhat of a perfect circle using this technique, you can again go and save that preset um, for that effect. And it's a per effect um, preset that you can save. So you can see, you know, this is not a great circle. Oh my goodness, I can't even click on that. There we go. Not a great circle, but then we can go over here and we can hit save and we can say circle. Wow, circle. And now if we delete this clip and add rotoscoping to the entire track, and then we go down here and hit circle. Um, oh, and I did it over here. In the, so it even saves the keyframes, obviously. Um, we're gonna move this all the way to the back and delete that. So now when we click on it, boom, see that? Now we have a circle applied and uh, we can actually uh, update current preset. And now if we delete this, add the rotoscoping again, and we go to here and hit circle, boom, it's there. And it applies to all the tracks or all the clips on the same track, which is pretty nifty. Finally, you can save the actual effect stack. Um, so you can save uh, all of the effects that are applied. You can apply multiple uh, effects at the same time. So if we say we wanna mirror it and do this and do that, boom, right? <laughs> and then we can uh, come in here and we can click on this and hit save effect stack. And this will save all of the effects that we have in our stack. Um, 
That's everything that I want to talk about uh, in this video, talking about effects. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you all are enjoying this series and learning something from it. Uh, but like I said, that's going to do it. Thank you for watching. I'll see you guys in the next one.